Greetings fans, friends, and family. Your crafty diva cat here with another video of my works in progress series. This is the first one for Teresa Wentzler's Mermaid. Now I did start this kit about a year ago and I've done several Teresa Wentzler patterns in the past. So I'm familiar with how difficult and complicated they can be. The issue with this one is it's my first Teresa Wentzler kit. And so I ran across some things that I hadn't run across doing other work with her. So this is the mermaid kit. Now it's a bit battered, this picture, because as I said, I've been working on it for about a year, so it's been carried around in my bags for a while. It's a quite complex pattern. The pattern itself, I have had to tape back together a few times. So it comes in one piece, like that. And there are some more detailed charts on the back for the over one areas because this is stitched over two on even weave and for some of the back stitching. Now when people talk about Teresa Wensler, the first thing they talk about is oh those blended colors because most of the colors in a Teresa Wensler pattern consist of two different colors of embroidery floss being held together to create one blended color. And Mermaid is no exception. This is the symbols chart. It's front and back. And as you can see, almost every single color is a blended color with two different colors in it. This makes it extremely time consuming. It takes twice as long to ready your needle every time. But I do have one tip if you're doing one of these kits because you're gonna have a lot of areas where you don't complete a full section of floss that you've created and you don't want to throw away all those ends especially with the kit and I'll talk more about that later so one of the things you're going to want to do is create your own card for your blended floss so this is my card for blended floss and this is just a sheet of notebook paper that's been folded in half to make it a little bit stronger with the symbols drawn on for each blended color as you can see there I have started out along one side, went along the bottom, went back the other side. One important thing to do is find a spot to make an up arrow to indicate where the top of your card is because you're going to run into a lot of symbols that are just backwards or upside down versions of another symbol that looks exactly the same otherwise. And it can get very complex figuring out which thread it was, especially when they're very close in color to one another. So definitely create one of these cards for yourself or you're going to be driving yourself crazy trying to keep track of all your blended threads. Uh, as for the kit itself, it's stitched on even weave fabric and it's nice high quality fabric that's in the kit. I'll show you how far I have gotten, which is pretty far. Give you a little bit more of a close up there of some of the areas. The body of the mermaid is where it's stitched over one instead of being stitched over two, which creates a beautiful amount of detail. You can sort of see a little bit with her face there, although it's not completely done yet, so it doesn't look that great. Um, it, it really makes that area pop, though, and I was extremely pleased when I started working on it to see what a difference it made in the detail. It really, really looks beautiful, and I'm really excited for when I get a chance to finish it. I've had to put this aside for now to work on Christmas present crafts like Mates, which you've been seeing in my Works in Progress series already. And I try not to have more than one super complicated kit that I'm working on at a time, so I have to put away this one so that I have my one complicated one and then my simpler projects to work on to break the monotony. So my problem with this kit is that the person who determined the floss amounts was way off base. I ran out of colors like you wouldn't believe. In particular, the color that's used in this border right here is also used in a lot of the shells in the border and it's used in a lot of the mountains and such in the cross stitch design. And I've had to buy a couple of additional skeins of that color. And then there's other colors like 501 which is used in the mermaid's tail that I have 
tons of leftover floss and I've almost finished that area. So it's very inconsistent. They gave you way too much of some colors of floss and not even close to enough of others colors of floss. So that really bothers me. Although unlike some kits, this kit, which is a leisure arts kit, denotes their floss colors by the DMC numbers, which does make it easier to purchase them. So if you run out, you can go and find the correct colors. But this has taught me that I don't want to necessarily do a big project like this again from a kit because it's easier to just buy the floss already on my own when I'm working on it. So that's part one of Teresa Wensler's Mermaid. I'll pick up part two when I'm able to start working on this project again and have made some more progress. I haven't started the back stitching on it yet, nor have I finished the over one stitching. So I'll have more on that next time. For more tips, tricks, lessons, and works in progress, check out Crafty Diva Cat on Facebook and Twitter. As always, thanks for watching and happy crafting.